This lesson is for section 11.7, Solving Systems of Inequalities. Our two objectives today are going to be to graph a system of inequalities and find the feasible region. And this is a vocabulary term from probably last year that you've already heard of. And that just means the possible solutions for your system of inequalities. Um, the second objective today is going to be to determine if a point is a solution to a given inequality. So I'm going to begin with a problem like that first. So um, when you're asked to decide if a point is a solution to your inequality, you're simply plugging in your coordinates, this x, y value, for the x and y um, that appears within the inequality. So here I would have 2 times 3 minus 3 times 1, and I want to check to see if this is less than 12. 6 minus 3 is less than 12, so this is a solution. Because this checks, this is a true statement, this would be a solution. Now in the second point, when I plug in 6, 0, I end up with a false statement. 12 is not less than 12, so because this is false, I would write not a solution. So this is a bit of a review here for you guys, but I still wanted to go over that. Now when we start getting to graphing our systems of inequalities, this is where it gets a little bit trickier. Um, we're going to start off with a, an easier system and then work our way to a more difficult one. I'm going to graph the top inequality here in red and the bottom one in blue. Now, when you look at this, you should recognize this as a parabola. So this is the parabola y is greater than or equal to x squared. So when I graph this, I'm just going to sketch this. It doesn't have to be beautiful, but uh, let's sketch that. We'd have an intersection at 0, 0, or the vertex at 0, 0. And it would be a solid line, and we would shade above this uh, parabola here. These would represent the points that are greater than or equal to x squared. Now the uh, bottom inequality, this is a circle with a radius of 1. And when I graph this guy, I should have a dashed line here to um, represent the fact that this is just a less than symbol. Now I'm, sur I'm supposed to shade all of the points that are less than 1, which is going to be the inside of this circle. Okay, the sum of x squared and y squared less than 1 is the inside of this. Now what we are looking for in our feasible region here is the overlapping region. And notice that these two overlap only within here. So this is the feasible region, and it just represents all of the possible solutions. So it, it shows you all possible solutions to our system of inequalities. Okay, so what you are going to be asked to do is not just to graph this, but to find um, the points of intersection. So we do have two unique points of intersection here um, between these two inequalities. Now, to find the points of intersection, we're just going back to a previous skill in section 11.6, um, where you solve systems, nonlinear systems. So what we're going to be doing now is just solving the system y equals x squared and x squared plus y squared equals 1. Okay. This problem should look familiar. We did do this problem um, just yesterday, actually, in a video. But um, I'm going to redo, redo this question because I think it's sometimes tough for you guys to uh, do some of these substitution problems. So um, some of you might want to substitute you know, the x squared in here for the y and make this x squared plus x to the fourth equals 1, which you're welcome to do. Um, but I, I'm going to do the reverse and plug in y for this um, x squared here. So now I have y plus y squared equals 1. And I now have a quadratic that I'm going to solve. So I'm going to use the, tr the quadratic formula here to get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4 times um, negative 1 all over 2. So y is going to equal negative 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2. Now we talked about this yesterday, that these produce two different um, values, a positive and a negative value. So when I, when I look inside here in this equation, um, I notice that y cannot be a negative output because x squared is always going to become a positive. So anytime you take that value and you square it, you'll always have a positive. And you can think of it in reverse. If you try to solve for x, you need to take the square root of y. y has to be a positive or 0. So y must be greater than or equal to 0 here in order for this equation to hold true. Um, in order for you to get non, um, I'm sorry, real solutions, okay? So we can throw out now 
um, this value and use y equal to negative 1 plus root 5 over 2. So if y is equal to negative 1 plus, plus root 5 over 2, then our x value is going to be the square root of that value, right? I'm going to plug that into here. x equals the square root of y. So x equals the square root of negative 1 plus root 5 over 2. And oh, I'm sorry, it's plus or minus. I should have put plus or minus on the outside of this as well. So we have two unique coordinates. One is positive square root of negative 1 plus root 5 over 2, comma, negative 1 plus root 5 over 2. This is just our x and our y value. And the other one is going to be the opposite. So uh, the square root of negative 1 plus root 5 over 2, comma, negative 1 plus root 5 over 2. So that would represent these two points here and here. Okay. All right, the next problem on the second page is a little bit more complex of a system. I am going to be using um, blue for these two inequalities here. And um, I'm actually going to just leave that x and y axis here, just like that, because this is the line, uh, this is the x axis, and this is the y axis here. And I'm supposed to be shading above the x axis and to the right of the y axis. So, so far, that's where my little hairs would overlap, right inside the first quadrant. Now, um, let's graph y um, is less than e to the x minus 1 in red. So I'm looking basically at graphing y equals e to the x minus 1. So this is e to the x shifted to the right one unit. So we think about the points um, in e to the x. We have negative 1, 1 over e, 0, 1, and 1, e. And we're going to move all of these to the right by adding 1. So we have 0, 1 over e. So I, I actually have my y-intercept here, 1, 1, and 2, e. Okay, so let's graph that. And I would like you guys to um, show the coordinates here on your graph. But this is going to be a dashed line here. And we are supposed to be shading um, below this. So it's supposed to be under here. I'm going to draw little hairs in there to represent that. The next up, I have a log equation. Let's do this one in green. Um, y is equal to log base 3 of x. So remember, this is the inverse of 3 to the x. So we can take our coordinates for 3 to the x, negative 1, 1 third, 0, 1, and 1, 3. And we can flip the x and the y because we know it's the inverse of those points. So really, on the graph of log base 3 of x, we have the point 1 third, negative 1, 1, 0, and 3, 1. So that's what I'm going to graph now. So 1 third, negative 1, 1, 0, and 3, 1 looks like this. Oops, sorry, it's supposed to be a dashed line. Like so. And this is going to be shaded above. Okay, so we have all the values here above here. And then finally, um, that last line, y is less than or equal to 9. This is going to be a uh, vertical line that is solid, like so. And it's shaded to the left. So this overlapping region then is inside here. So I'm going to darken this kind of by a lot. Okay, now it looks like this um, region is unbounded, but it, it is not. Because eventually this um, e to the x minus 1 here will cross with uh, x equals 9. So let me just show you kind of what we're going to be finding. We need to find all of our intersections. So we've got um, a few different corner points that we need to find. One is up here. One is here, 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 and here. Luckily, we actually have um, those exact coordinates already. We know that the y-intercept here was 0 over, let me zoom in on that, was 0 over, uh, 0 comma 1 over e. We know, obviously, the origin is 0, 0. And we also know that point was 1, 0. So really, I only have two coordinates to find. And these are luckily not so easy, uh, not so hard. Normally, it would be a system that we'd have to solve, but in this case, um, that system, and it still is a system, but the system's very basic. So I'm solving in order to find, let's label this point A and this point B. If I want to find point A, I am taking the system, x is less than or equal to 9, 
that red line here and the other um, red line, which is a red curve, y is less than e to the x minus 1. And I'm, I'm basically solving the system. So x equals 9 and y equals e to the x minus 1. Well, if x already equals 9, I can simply substitute that in here and get y equals e to the 9 minus 1, e to the 8th. So that coordinate for point A must be uh, 9, e to the 8th. Okay? So you're going to label all of these important points, um, especially on your test and your homework. Make sure that all of these points are, are clearly labeled. Now for point B, I want to do the same thing. Um, this time for point B, I'm going to use the system, um, again, y is less than or equal to 9, or I'm sorry, x is less than or equal to 9. And your other line, y is less than log base 3 of x. And again, this is a pretty basic system because if x equals 9, I can just substitute that value into here and solve. So y is equal to log base 3 of 9, which is 2. Okay, 3 to the second power is 9, so y equals 2. And my other coordinate, coordinate b, is 9 comma 2. So um, this graph doesn't look all that pretty, but uh, that's essentially all you need to do is find all of your corner points, um, show the feasible region, show your solutions here, and then um, you're good to go. So that's the end of the lesson. Tomorrow we'll go over some practice problems. Nice job.